Hey everyone, Jessica Cabezi here. In today's tutorial, I'm gonna be doing a simple portrait retouch. So I'm gonna be showing you guys basically how I'm gonna fix up this image. And as you can see, I have my frequency separation folder already here. I used an action that I have available for free download and there will be a link to that. And I'm using the frequency separation technique and again, if you use this as an action, it will create this folder for you. And it's pretty simple. It's going to save you a lot of time. So what I did is I played the action and it created the high frequency and low frequency layers for me. And what I'm going to start um, by doing is going to Command J and duplicating the low frequency layer. And to be honest, in my opinion, this is where all the magic happens in the low frequency layer. I turned off the high frequency because as you can see, if we simply clean up these colors on her face, blend them in, make them smooth, it's going to do a lot for this photo. And that's usually what I like to concentrate on is the low frequency. It's very important that you don't spend all your time on the high frequency because, you know, low frequency is where it's at, <laughs> basically. So we're going to go ahead and go to the healing brush tool. We're not doing spot healing, we're doing healing brush tool. And if you're doing this for the first time, might be a little confusing, but I guarantee you it's gonna take a little bit of practice, but you will catch on. And I like to start a little bit on the smaller side of the brush. So here are my settings. It's 80 pixels for the size. The hardness is at 71%, spacing, don't really care too much about that. To be, this is just a regular default brush, you guys. If you go in your, br your brush tool here, it should just be default. So I'm going to first focus on um, just blending these colors in. And so I'm holding Alt, clicking, and I'm just kind of sampling colors. And I, the, here's the thing though. I like to sample a color and then just keep clicking in the direction where I'm sort of retouching and I'm sampling a couple of times a minute. So I'm not just like clicking once and then doing this the whole entire time. You want to sample different areas. So for instance, if you're sampling this area up here, this is a lighter color. So if I go here, as you can see, it's not blending that correct color in. So you want to sample colors from nearby areas. So as you can see, that is what I'm doing now. So when I'm going into this lighter area, I'm sampling as I go along. So it's like you're picking up your friends <laughs> from each block. I don't, I don't know, horrible analogy. But basically you're not just sampling one from one place. So it's again, it's very important that you keep sampling and I feel like the low frequency separation layer is going to be detrimental to the retouching because as I will show you in just a moment, you're gonna see the difference that's already been made from me just retouching on the low frequency. I didn't even touch the high frequency separation yet. I'll show you guys in just a moment. And I've been doing this for years now, so this is kind of like second nature to me, but you know, in the beginning it was extremely difficult, you know, retouching for me, I, I looked up so many tutorials and you know, I, I learned about dodging and burning, but it was just not working out for me. I mean, my eyes were hurting <laughs> by the end of that. So frequency separation by far has been the easiest for me, the most effective, and it saves me a lot of money from hiring a professional retoucher. So let me show you guys. I just cleaned that up. Let me show you guys how it used to look before. Do you see that? Do you see how much smoother it looks right now? And let me show you it with a high frequency uh, layer on. See, you didn't even have to touch the high frequency, uh, the high frequency layer. So what I'm trying to tell you guys is you guys can just work on the low frequency layer and you can get some great results.
Okay, so that's looking pretty good. Just very subtle. Usually what I'll do is I'll just keep this under eye color in there. I'm not trying to change her whole face. I'm not trying to make it flawless. I just want it to look a little clean. And I'm always careful with these lines here. I'm blending them in just slightly. And these areas down below here are going to be a little tricky. You don't want to just blend all these colors in because then the picture is going to look a little weird. You still want to keep the structure of someone's face and that includes the shadows. So I'm just kind of trying to blend the shadows in as best I can. And again, this is all on the low frequency separation layer. And if you have any issues blending colors, and like here I'm having a little bit of an issue blending those in, what I like to do is take the blur tool, strength at 100%, and just kind of go into this area with it, and then it will blend it a little bit better. And I don't always do this, by the way. I do this for cases where, again, it's giving me a little bit of an issue. And then that will just help me blend it in a little bit better. So let's see how this is looking so far. So that's looking pretty good. I'll show you a before and after. And I'm seeing, I just want to patch up this area right here and I think we'll be pretty good. Looks clean, looks nice to me. And again, we never even had to touch the high frequency layer, which is great. The high frequency, um, I would leave that for little tiny um, areas right here, like such as this. So I'll go to the high frequency and I will just get rid of these tiny little areas. I'm really not going to touch, I'm just going to get a little bit of areas on the forehead right here, but otherwise nothing major is going to happen with the forehead. I think that looks pretty good. And to be honest, I don't mind the texture on there. I'm not trying to make it look flawless. I just want it to look a little bit cleaner. So I think that looks pretty great. If for any reason, you know, you don't like that color under the eye, another thing that I'd like to do is make a new layer. And using a round brush, I'm sampling a color underneath. And with a very low opacity, I'm talking like 11%, you can go under that. And again, very, very subtle. I don't want to do anything crazy here. Even though it looks like, okay, I might have gone a little bit overboard. Okay, let's calm this down a little. Let's lower this. It's getting a little out of hand. Okay, here we go. So I think that looks pretty good. So let me show you guys a complete before and after. That's before. That's after. And this did not take me long at all. Again, just cleaned up the skin a little. It's really all about practice. You're not gonna get this the first try. I mean, I was helping someone retouch and I feel like it's just, you have to practice, you have to get the movements, especially sampling areas. It, it's just something that's gonna come after you've uh, worked on it for a little. So um, if you try this out right now and you're not getting it, it's all practice. Don't psych yourself out. 
keep at it and don't give up. I am going to have a second part of this tutorial where I'm gonna be coloring this entire image and coloring is essential to the image. Uh, it's, we're gonna, you know, just transform this image from where it's at right now. So there will be a link to that. I hope you watch it and I hope this video was helpful. Thank you guys so much for watching.